Do you recall the two magicians from Egypt who, in the presence of the Pharaoh, likewise turned their staff, but Moses' snake ate their snakes instead? They were, in fact, given strength by the formidable demon Belial, and this is their tale. The Book of Jans and Jambers, also known as the Apocryphon of Jans and Jambers, is a work of Greek literature that was most likely composed in Roman Egypt during the 1st and 3rd centuries AD. It is a made-up tale about the legendary magicians Jans and Jambers from ancient Egypt that was purportedly written by a member of the pharaoh's staff. It is now generally accepted that it is part of the apocryphal Old Testament literature. According to tradition, Moses' enemies in Egypt were two magicians by the names of Jans and Jambers. Even though we only know a little amount about the two men from a book that is now titled after them, this tradition is based on a reference to them in 2 Timothy 3 verse 8. The magicians who, like Moses in Exodus 7 verse 11, were able to change their staff into a snake were these two men. These two names, even though they aren't mentioned by name in Exodus, have historically been connected to mythological magicians. When Nemenius asserted in Eusebius Preparatio Evangelica chapter 9 verse 8 that Jans and Jambers were able to undo the plagues on Egypt, he may have been alluding to this tale. The Decretum Gelasianum, a 6th century Latin manuscript claimed to Pope Gelasius I, contained 62 apocryphal rejected writings, including Jans and Jambers. Writing by Jans and Jambers is difficult to date because it is fragmented and lacking of trustworthy historical allusions. Origen appears to be alluding to the book, Contra Celsus, chapter 5 verse 51, when he comments on 2 Timothy. The pieces of the Chester Beatty Papyri 16 date to the 3rd century AD. The book may be either Jewish or Christian because the Jans and Jambers traditions are prevalent in both streams of tradition. The Damascus document makes reference to one of the magicians for the first time, showing that this practice dates back to before 100 BC. According to legend, Moses and Aaron were first raised with the help of the Prince of Lights, whereas Jans and his brother were first reared by Belial during the initial redemption of Israel. In his commentary on Matthew 27 verses 3 to 10, Origen remarked that the reference to the Jans and Jambers in 2 Timothy came from a non-canonical source. Numerous rabbinic texts, such as the Targum and Bemen, Exodus 7 verse 11, and Exodus 1 verse 15, are where the names originate. Paul would have known the story because the people who resisted Moses are referred to as Jans and Jambers in 2 Timothy 3 verse 8. Paul contends that his opponents carry on the tradition of these magicians by having corrupt minds and being ineligible to practice the faith. Dibelius and Konzelman mention the historian Pliny, whose work was written around the time of 2 Timothy. Another type of magic, descended from Moses, Jans, Lot Apes, and the Jews, has a history that predates Zoroaster by many thousands of years. Dibelius and Konzelman both mention a tradition in Acts of Peter and Paul. According to legend, two Egyptians named Jans and Jambers fooled the Pharaoh and his army until they drowned in the water. The book is difficult to read because of the gaps in the text and how most of the lines are written. As the two magicians were summoned to confront Moses, Jambers hastily returned to the library to get his magical equipment. A British library fragment claims that Jambers, sometimes written Mambers, was a practitioner of necromancy. After dying, he went into the underworld, where there is a huge burning pit of damnation. Invoking his shadow from the afterlife, Mambers employed necromancy, unlocked his brother Jan's magical texts, and more. The judgment will be against me since I was more cunning than all crafty magicians and resisted the two brothers, Moses and Aaron, who performed incredible signs and marvels, Jan's soul said. Since I, your brother, died in a proper and lawful manner, I will be held accountable. As a result, I perished and was transported from the living world to the netherworld and the pit of perdition, where there is a great burning. 
It's possible that the fragment's only use in New Testament studies will be to shed light on the tradition that underlay 2 Timothy 3 verse 8. In the Gelasian decree, the penitents of Cyprian, the magician and martyr of Antioch who served as the inspiration for the Faust story, is paired alongside the penitents of Jans and Mambers. We have this, and it describes how he came to work for the devil. There are two allusions to our wizards in it. The devil's leader praises Cyprian and calls him a young man with outstanding skills, a new jambers, and someone who is qualified for the ministry. In stanza 17, Cyprian states of himself, I don't think there has ever been a worse man than I was, I outdid the jams and jambers of history. In the middle of their fake miracles, they acknowledged the finger of God, but I was sure that there was no God. If God didn't forgive those who even partially acknowledged him, how should he forgive me who entirely disregarded him? According to this perspective, the Egyptian magicians were not absolved. The Greek Acts of St. Catherine are found in three manuscripts by J. Vito published in Paris in 1897. According to the first, Catherine had read all the medical writings of Hippocrates, Galen, Aristotle, Homer, Plato, Philistian, Eusebius, and the Sibyl, as well as Jans and Jambers' necromancy. This is repeated numerous times in the second, which also contains two paragraphs from Jans and Mambers. The first of these is challenging to translate but contains the following, they reveal the faces, or people, who have lain dormant in the earth throughout the years to those who desire to view them. The other is superior, however, as was also stated by the prophet, the stone which the builders rejected, Jans and Jambers spoke about the stone by which the tomb was built as well as of the mountain's mules as a symbol of the Lord's manger and more. The entirety of Jans and Jambers is unknown. It is only known from four fragmented papyrus Greek texts and fragmented parchment Latin, Old English, and Ethiopian translations. It has also been mentioned in literary works. Around 250 years ago, Origen first referenced the statement and stated that it was the source of inspiration for a chapter in the New Testament, namely 2 Timothy 3 verse 8. The Apocryphon is credited to have been written by one of Pharaoh's officers. It tells the story of two brothers named Jans and Jambers who are related to Balaam and the Apis priest Patefris. They remain in Memphis vicinity. Even if he comprehends the importance of the mother of the brother's dream in which a cypress is cut down in her paradise, Jans encourages the mother to remain silent. The strange episode is foretold by an unidentified person, possibly Moses, who tells Jans that an extraterrestrial entity would cut down the cypress and that he will punish Egypt in three years. In response, Jans walls the garden and stationed a guard. His foes predict his death as well as that of his mother, brother, and brother for building a terrible enclosure that appeared to be a serapium. Jans and Jambers were rumored to have spoken about sexual ethics. They both agree that marriage ought to be outlawed. Jans invites the Egyptian wise men to visit his fortified paradise and have a seat under an apple tree. While they are there, a thunderstorm and an earthquake harm the garden's trees. In his library, Jans looks up the significance of these incidents. The Lord of the Earth and the Overseer of the Cosmos have sent four men to meet him there and will transport him to Hades. Out of sympathy, the guys extend his stay on Earth for a certain period of time. Jans is having a marriage debate with many friends when he is summoned to the Memphis Palace to confront Moses and Aaron. He does feats that are on par with theirs, yet he is sick. As he departs, he tells Pharaoh that Moses' power comes from a supernatural source. Back at his house, he notices divine signs that indicate the impending triumph of good. He gives his friends custody of his mother after receiving a summons to appear in court in Memphis. Jan selects Jambers to be his successor, and he is given a secret document. He warns him against advancing with the Egyptian army as it pursues the Hebrews. And Jan said to him, Ambers, I give you a document. Keep it secret. 
Take care not to come out on the day the king and the chiefs of Egypt come out to pursue the people of the Hebrews or to go along with them. Instead, plan to be ill and save your own soul from death and from the destruction of the Egyptians, which the God of the heavens would carry out in accordance with his word on behalf of the children of the Hebrews whom the Egyptians had caused to pursue them. The Egyptian army drowns in the Red Sea while pursuing the Hebrews, but Jambres avoided it. The family returns to their estate as Jan's condition worsens. Jambres laments broken promises, maybe alluding to a deal with the devil. Jans truly passes away violently, possibly from fire. His mother makes an effort to save him but is unable, so they part ways. Jambers inters them both in the same tomb after she dies violently not long after. Jambers summons his brother's shadow from Hades and opens the magical scrolls beneath the apple tree. Jans is unhappy. He describes his death and his experience in Hades. He cautions his brother to change his ways before he too is found guilty. The idea that idolaters and prostitutes are sinners who go to hell is emphasized particularly. Jans also lists a number of giants in a passage that can only be found in the Ethiopic fragment, usually employing the where are question mark adverb. The giants Amon and Bran, who consumed humans like locusts as well as various animals, birds, and livestock, are no longer present. They were unable to be satisfied, so they drank blood and contaminated the Orient. But their father, Bepers, threw a stone the size of a thousand talents towards the heights of heaven with all his might. He ran in a 250,000 person stadium on the same day as lunchtime and got back before the sun set. Thank you for watching.